Hey guys, welcome to Strong with Raj. So in this workout, my girlfriend, Dr. Inga, joined me. And uh, this may have been maybe the 10th time that she has come in. We have been together for seven years. And uh, for the first two years, at least, I think we were just client and uh, trainer. And for uh, our schedules and work times we are not able to lift together much but we have been uh, able to do it recently and uh, she knows that I prefer being on my own in my workouts but there has been many times that I have actually needed her to be with me and she knows that so this workout was um, something that we planned and we both were doing our own things my mind was bench press and uh, i think some deadlifts right at the end that's correct and hers was squat and i go into a personal trainer coaching mode when she's doing her things and she lets me do that she still respects my uh, feedback about her form and uh, yes it is very wholesome relationship where we give and take and uh, in my last video titled how i fixed my uneven bench press uh, i have highlighted how it was because of her feedback i started doing a slightly wider grip on my left hand side and it has affected in a positive way in this video i think it was the first time this is the workout before the last video that is uneven bench press fixed is when she actually suggested me so this is when the light bulb moment came and as you can see in this video my grip is just normal they are symmetrical and they are what you can say equidistant from the middle the session went very well again i was doing my light to medium kind of weight and uh, i do think that my left arm was uh, going a bit wayward as it does and i mentioned in my last video and maybe in some of the videos as well that how having a spotter a partner is so good and as you can see i'm just giving her instructions that what i need to do she's new to all this and she's not there yet She's not there yet because she hasn't been there. We haven't done many workouts where she's spotting me from a bench press. I would ideally want her to just lift it off for me about, let's say, 50% of her strength or even 40. Uh, I don't mind doing that. Whereas I have seen when I have spotted her, which I've done many, many times, I have almost maybe lifted it for her and she didn't like it because it's too light and then when it is time to have the bar on your hand it's all of a sudden too too heavy which makes so much sense so we learned from it like as you can see my left arm there so we learned a lot from each other and i learned a lot because i am not used to having someone with me although i've come to the conclusion that it is better to have someone than not but who that bet that someone has to really know what you're doing and what i need from them and i make it very crystal clear to dr inga what i need from her and that is what this video is about how i was asking her to spot me in a certain way this bench uh, is a competition style bench uh, a powerlifting competition style bench where the spotter has an elevated foot platform almost and they can stand there and they are a lot taller which is very very important when you are spotting someone not by standing on side but by standing right behind their head you have to be able to pull the bar up which means you hook your fingers in one in one and one from the top and then you help them either take the bar off the rack or spotting them I've seen so many videos where somebody is spotting and they're, they're holding the bar with their fingers, if you can imagine, fingertips facing the ceiling as if they can curl that bar. You do not have the mechanical force if your hands are underneath. 
if your fingers are facing the lifter, you have better way of manipulating that bar, which is what? Pulling it up when it really counts. When the lifter, the bench press presser is really struggling, you have to help them. And if it is too much for them, you can actually rack it back for them. It's not going to happen if your grip is underarm, meaning both the fingertips of both your hands are facing the ceiling. So just make sure that doesn't happen when your spotter is there. Many spotters do not know what they have to do. I make sure I inform them what I need. Like for this, where Dr. Inga is squatting, she knows where I always stand when I'm when I'm watching her. It is about 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. She also knows where the camera is placed if we have a camera, which we mostly have. She also knows that I will not be there to spot her. I don't know why um, I find it largely impractical to have someone spot your squats, standing right behind you, touching around your back. I don't find any point. Just have safety so that if you fail, they're there. Let the person squat. I can think of only in bench press that you need someone to spot you because it is possible. It is possible to hold the bar. You cannot hold the bar when somebody is squatting. You can, but only when your sides, when they're standing on your side, which means you need two people, which we don't always have. In overhead press, you can't because nobody can touch the bar. It's so up high. Same thing with deadlift. Unless they're standing on the side and helping you actually lift it up, bench press is the only lift where I believe the spotter is required and it has more purpose, more use. You can do your last grinding reps of last two reps or three reps with a little bit of assistance and still get a very good workout. You can experience what it is to grind a bench press and also to have it this path very straight and bar remaining trajectory. And the conventional gym bro type of spotting which is it's all you bro yeah yeah push 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 yes it is good it is needed but that is not the whole purpose the whole purpose is the safety secondly encouragement thirdly feedback feedback is very important okay bro when you are pressing up you are pressing up and it is going the bar is bouncing around dancing around it's not going into its bar path and you can do it because you are doing it in a non efficient way then you can actually do it straight where it was supposed to when you're doing the first rep and second rep you just have to be very still and focus everything on putting the bar back to the slot it came from in as straight line as possible i think this is dr inga's 95 kg nice not so deep but that'll do we have we worked this day on this uh, session on her heavy squats uh, which is this number and the work was to really push the knees out pushing your knees out from the very beginning of the descent ensures that your hips are active very beginning of the of the descent when you push your knees out it has nothing to do with knees think of it your knee is the one end it's the what i would call it a distal end i suppose of your femur when you push your knees out your femur gets into outward motion like she's doing now it's still not so outward and that activates your adductor muscles very quickly on the descent abductor sorry because they're abducting and on the way up the knees will retract its way and then the abductors are actually used as extensors this is a bit more I suppose technical description but here also as you can see my knees and wide and apart why so that my leg muscles my thigh muscles my hamstrings are all activated all the way up to my glutes and as a body my leg touching the floor or in this case the plates forms a circuit a really tight circuit which transfers the power uh, here we go. I think this is 95 again. Yes, it's a bit better, but could be a little bit more efficient. Knees out, but she does really well. Her heels stay very stuck to the floor, which is good. 
uh, ascent see this is this is what needs to be seen if you see her that she's struggling which is only in descent her ascent is crisp like in this way as you can see my bar goes down and up as the bar goes up the speed of the bar remains very same not exactly same it does get faster at the top but it's very uniform when dr inga is squatting as you will see i, I hope uh, her issue is mostly in descent look at my arm and she comes to save me she is so lovely she just she's very safety oriented and anyway so when she goes down she has lesser mechanical efficiency but look at that ascent no problems in ascent she is good and it is if not it is one of the most challenging part of a squat to come up but it all depends on how you go down if you go down in a manner in which you are using your thighs sorry your hips and when i say hips it is many many muscles in the most efficient way it's going to affect your ascent in a positive way you are coming going to come up using almost every single muscle that is possible in your hip region a hip to me is a region which consists of many muscles and all those muscles should be used smartly and efficiently in order to do a squat or any lift and that is the one uh, criteria of what i do i do lifts that uses as many muscle groups as possible not muscles but muscle groups and ac according to that on that principle the form is is given a framework an architecture is provided on that principle do the exercise that uses most amount of muscle groups that is the first principle uh, there are two other principles on which my training philosophy is built upon which is mostly from starting strength the second being uh, if you think of it it is all exercise selection what exercise to select let's say an example of doing uh, turkish get ups they are very good exercise i like it it's very nice you are on the floor and you have a uh, an arm extended towards the ceiling you're on the side of on your body and then you have to stand up you are using a lot of joints and almost all muscles you're using your trunk upper body to stay stable and hips and knees and elbows to move very good exercise it ticks one box using a lot of muscle groups but how much heavier can you go progressively not much all you can hold in your hand is a dumbbell or a kettlebell so it doesn't qualify a squat qualifies because it uses all the major muscle groups and you can progressively overload for a lot of weight that's just a little insight into my programming or my training philosophy i don't do squat and deadlift because i love them i don't love any exercises i have done a simple and careful analysis which is based on logic and rationale and then selected what is the best lift for me and for most people it is compound lifts done by a barbell with the principle of progressive overload sounds very boring sounds very a language of a manual but it works i would love to do turkish get ups i would love to do hip thrust so let's take an example of hip thrust in hip thrust you are moving the bar 6 inches at the most i think depending how you set yourself up you can load a lot of weight on the bar i'll give that but the range of movement is not effective at all look how much the bar moves in a deadlift look how much the bar moves in a squat look how much the bar moves in a bench press and look how much the bar moves in overhead press but not so in hip thrust that's my problem with hip thrust otherwise i'll do it the other problem that i have 
with hip thrust is the placing of the bar. Your bar is sitting on your pelvic bone. Why would you keep a heavy bar there where the amount of muscle holding is a lot less as opposed to a squat where it is on top of your back? The whole back is a broad and a very long part of your anatomy. It can take that kind of load. A hip thrust sitting on essentially your pelvic bone a bit more up or down it's not very safe it, i i would even say that it is not designed for that kind of loading but it must be because people are doing it i i think in long term there will be issues i think you will also reach your um, upper limit very soon in a, in a hip thrust you can start light and very soon you will hit the ceiling but i could be wrong because that's more individualistic i've never done it but in deadlift you can start light and go on for a long time and keep going and keeping it rather simple i think i did 200 kg after a long time here um i'm using straps for 200 kg which is a joke this is all because of my left arm being so lazy and slow and it affects my my grip um, and uh, to the point that I just have to drop the bar when I lock out otherwise I, it's something I don't do anyway guys a lot of rambling I will see you next time thank you for watching